exciting as have a new A League season upon us. Yeah, very excited. It seems a little bit too long that we've had to wait, but obviously it's very important that everyone will say it. Health, and, health and safety was the most important thing. But it's only three days. Obviously, the season starts with other teams now. Uh, but we're fully focused on our first game, and one exciting game it is for us. Yeah, it's been really interesting. Obviously, when when you step into a new football club, it's like being on your first day in school. It's you know you don't know what to expect. You've heard a lot of things. What I've been vitally impressed with is the infrastructure of the football club you know it's it's huge the facilities are amazing really important that you have good people as well and there's a good nucleus of people here as well and I've got a team of players that want to work and want to learn so it's a good starting point for me it's nowhere near where I want it to be at the moment and I probably won't be for a few months I know that I understand that um, but it takes time to build things Well, it, it makes me laugh. It's one of the most, rather than the game we're talking about, people ask me this question most that they have done. I've ended up saying no interviews because they ask the same thing. And what I'll say is, you know, we, we, we've lost our number one goalkeeper. Our number one goalkeeper has gone back home because he did not want to be at the football club. I could say now that I wanted Daniel to be at the football club and make Daniel look the bad guy. And I'm not going to do that because Daniel had made uh, had a, an agreement with the football club. Uh, his family were over there and we, we accepted that and he's moved on. James in, in Adelaide, I've got James. He's a, he's a good person, he's a good player. He had a contract there. If they wanted to keep him there, I'm sure he'd still be there. So it's not always what it says on the outside. James is now our player. We're delighted to have him on board. It's the same situation with Bernie. You know, people say they've got people have got contracts, but there's always a reason why a player leaves. As I said, with my number one goalkeeper, whether it's family issues, whether it's a, the coach, the coach might be the problem. Whether it's a, a salary cap reduction, um, we're trying to save on that. Whether it's a, a personal um, salary reduction that they're talking about, there's a re there's a number of reasons. But it's not just as simple as oh, James Teresi signed for Robbo because Robbo was tracking him in 2015. There's a reason behind it. And once you get the reason behind it and you understand why you'll realise that it was the right move for James and it was the right move for Adelaide as well. Um, after the event is always easier. Did um, Laurie's comments in the media hurt, hurt you and hurt Bernie um, regarding the mental health issues? Hurt me? Didn't, didn't hurt me one bit because it's nothing to do with me. Obviously, there's a circumstance. I think since the comments that were made, I think since he's retracted them uh, publicly. So, as you said, Laurie, what Laurie says and does is none of my business. Obviously, it's, it's Bernie's business, but I think since the initial statement, I think he's retracted them. So that might tell you something as well. And how's Bernie been? Great. Brilliant. I love Bernie to bits. I've said that as a player. He's followed me three times. I also have got rid of him as well. When I was in Vancouver, I let him go because he wanted to go and play football. And I'm a big advocate of if, if a player's not happy, then they should go and play football. Uh, and then, then we get into the other argument and agreement. And I disagree with Gav sometimes about contracts and things like that. As a manager of a football team, when a player is not happy and doesn't want to be at your football club, it's very hard as a coach. You know, we're all young coaches aspiring to be the best. We're all trying to get better, trying to create cultures and environments, create the right mentality. And these words get thrown around as, as slogans and words, but they're very important. So if you've got in any workplace, 20 players that are really happy and two that are unhappy, is that going to be a positive workplace to work in? No, it's not. So my remit, and it was in Vancouver, it was in Newcastle, and that's why players left the club while I was there and they've left the club here, is because I don't want to force people to be here when they're not happy. But that's just me. What's this thing here? Ooh. You get that thing? What have we got? I don't know, it's a lizard. Hey, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to force people to be here. Um, because I try and create an environment and culture where it's a privilege to play football. It's a privilege to be out on the training field because millions and millions of kids, boys and girls, want to, tr want to play this game. So I, I don't want to force someone to not be here. Not a fan of Australian wildlife? No, that scared me, whatever that was. Yeah. And there's been a black snake look around here as well sometimes that we haven't caught. So, yeah, scared coming from Wales. How's, um, how's, uh, what can um, A-League fans expect from um, Graham Dorrance? He's a terrific player. I know that. I think people who followed him in the Premier League and mostly probably Scottish international games know he's a, he's a fantastic passer of the ball. He's a, he's a good professional. You know, you're only as good as your, your senior players in your team. Uh, and that's why I've brought in good veteran senior players, James Troisi, Ziggy Gordon, Graham Dorans. Bernie fits into that category as well because they are you. They set your tone as a team and as a manager. And 
These are very, they're all very good professionals, they're good trainers, uh, they set the right examples and they, they want to help the young players. We've got some fantastic young players at this football club and we've got to try and create pathways for them but we've also got to be successful in the short term as well or be super competitive in the short term and we will be. You know, whether that will be enough, time will tell over the course of the season. Um, but if you're going to try and beat us, you're going to have to earn the right to play. You're going to have to perform at your levels because I'll make sure that my team is fully committed and, and proud to wear this jersey. It's a big challenge as well as replacing the goals of Mitchell Duke. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Listen, we've lost some senior players. I've mentioned there Daniel Lopa, the number one goalie. I've meant Ye Matty Yeoman's left, Mitchell Duke's left, Schwegler's left. Four, four key players. That's why it was important I brought in some senior players who've got experience, um, as well as my other players that I'm trying to bring in as well, because we've still got room, we've still got plenty of cap space, we've still got a visa spot available. Whether we decide to use that now or you know midway through the season, we'll just dictate as it goes. But I'm in no rush to bring in players. I don't want to do it for the short term. I'm thinking about longer term uh, goals, which is important. Um, but I'm also thinking about the young players at the club as well that can get the opportunity to play. How flexible do you think you guys have to be this season, I guess, with the uncertainty of the draw? Yeah, I, th I think every team has to be. Uh, you know, if you're trying to predict who's going to do well in this league, it's very hard with the uncertainty surrounding COVID. And obviously with a little cluster that popped up the other day, that has put a little... Um, it's hit, it's hit us a little bit, but as you said, and that still might happen. But as I said, I'll, I'll revert back to values, and values are what's important is people's health and safety. You know, football becomes a secondary thing, but... That doesn't take away from I want to win games of football, I want to train properly, I want to be a winner and, and reach our goals here in the A-League, but people's health and safety are the most important thing. And um, I guess how exciting is it for the A-League to have a new, a new team? And a new, and a new brilliant, brilliant. I've, I've been aware of it in Major League Soccer. When I joined 10 years ago, it was 16, 17 teams. It's now 26 teams. You know, MacArthur coming in is great for Australian football, great for them. Obviously, they've got a good coach, good group of players and it's great for the A-League. We want more of that. You know, there's, there's one or two clubs that are obviously at the moment uh, looking at potential new owners and things like that. We want more clubs. The more te teams that you have available, the more competition, the more rivalries, the more opportunities to play, the more teams that come in, the more opportunities to play for young kids because I keep hearing the narrative of young players don't get given the chance and there's not enough games to play. And hopefully with the more teams that come in, that will help with the alignment of the MPL with the Youth League being on the same page as well, I think that's very important because we need to increase the names of, number of games for those young Australian players as well. Because if everyone's on the same page and we get more games for the young kids and we get more teams and we get more players that are Australian that are playing at a high level, that potentially before they go to Europe, it helps the national team. And it helps the national team then qualify for Olympics and World Cups and be successful in World Cups and Olympics. Do you think football Australia has the capacity, the capability to, to do that kind of in the short term, in the next few years? I think it does. Listen, you're talking to me, you're talking to a Welsh person who's got a small country that has now reached the second Euros in four years. So you can do it. What you need is a plan and a plan and a structure and building blocks in place and all being aligned and on the same page. So without a doubt, you can do it. It's just obviously the people, the powers of be who make the big decisions, who get paid the big money, they get to do it. And that's the fun part. And they will do it correctly. But sometimes people want to run before they can walk. It's important you don't go to base three, base four before you put the infrastructure in, in place first, base one and two. But I've got my job's hard enough as it is here to talk about that. All good, guys? All right, good. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Thanks.